What's up everyone, Lunar here, and today I'm going to bring you a video talking about uh, the live paint tool in Illustrator. I'm going to make a letter I, and I think I'm going to try to make a letter R, because those have curves and those are a little bit different. Like, whenever you get into making, um, like say a letter T, you don't necessarily have to use the live paint to make the letter T, you can just Pathfinder the T to make it one shape. That's not that hard. It's whenever you get into um, either serifs or letters with curves where uh, live paint is helpful. Okay, so I'm going to start with some rectangles and I will have no fill color. I'll leave the outline. I like to use, I'll just use black in this case. And I'll probably make it a little bit bolder so I can see it maybe like two. Okay, so. That can be the top half, or the top part of the um, the eye. Let's say it's a uh, capital I. So here's the bottom part. And I want the middle to be like the same width, I guess. So there is the middle part. Just dragging it off. And for this to work, um, all your lines need to line up perfectly. Like if you look right here, that looks pretty good. And you can tell that whenever I scaled the object up, my stroke width increased, so I'm going to put it back down to 2, not 3. Whoa. Okay, so now it's back down to 2. But then if you come down here, you'll see that I kind of overshot it. You need these to line up pretty well. And usually it'll just snap to the lines, um, so hopefully that'll work. Okay, so here's like a basic eye. Well, let's say I want to make it like curvy right here. So what I'll do now is, um, I guess you could get the pin tool and like make a curve, but that wouldn't be, uh, I guess perfect would be a good word. So I'm going to make um, some circles. And with these circles, I will line them up down here. And what's going to happen is it's going to make this shape like, like this right here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that after uh, I get everything made. And um, so I'm going to make this circle a tad bit larger because I want a larger um, curve right there. And this may be a little bit more tricky to line up. So there it snapped right there. And there it snaps right there. Like snap to the other line. And then I'll turn this uh, stroke width back down to 2. And so I'll just copy this over here until it snaps. Uh, you can kind of see it like it says intersect. So that is how I know that it works. Um, and so I'll just select both of them and then just copy them both up until they intersect. And here we go. So now we have a shape that looks like this. It kind of looks kind of funny. Um, kind of cool. So what you want to do now is now we're going to actually do the live paint part of it. And um, uh, actually I'm going to do one more change. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Mm, maybe not that wide. Maybe like this wide. Maybe just the same width as the circles. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to select everything. You're going to go to Object. You're going to go to Live Paint, and then you're going to go to Make. And so now you have your it's it's made technically, and you know you'll be in Live Paint because you'll select one thing and you'll select everything, and you'll see these weird squares here instead of uh, whatever's normally there. And so now you have this, and so now if you deselect it and hit the Live Paint bucket, what, what Live Paint does is it kind of makes each like shape that touches um, like uh, different. I don't, know, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, like if we were to just mess with this, there wouldn't be anything right here, but since we Live Painted it, it makes a shape right there. And so that's why you have to have all your lines touching. Like if there was a gap in between these circles, this shape would not have gotten made. Um, but anyway, so I would just select black and then you can fill in this to start and you can just click and you can also like hold or like click and drag and like do all that and do all that and do this. And now you can click inside this little space right here and it'll form like a curvy eye. And so you're wondering, well, how do I get rid of these black circles? If you select the whole thing, just uh, turn off your line color and they'll still be there but you won't see them and so now you have this eye that's kind of curved right there and um, yeah so next thing you could do if you want is um, you can go to object and expand it 
and then hit OK and that kind of gets rid of the circles and if you want to go a step further you can then Pathfinder it all as one shape unite and that gets rid of all the lines inside so now you have a clean um, symmetrical eye shape um, but I'm going to delete this for now and I'll move this one over okay so now I'm going to make an R this is this will be and then I'll put the uh, stroke back on no fill color okay so this will be that part um, let me go ahead and get like a leg I guess you can call it um, bend it down about halfway and then I'm going to use this tool over here called the shear tool and you can get it and tilt it like this, like so. I'll probably do it about like that. Okay, so now we have, I'm gonna hide this because it's snapping to the wrong thing. Okay, so now we have this and, um, whoa. I need to change this to selection. And now we just need to make this top part. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll probably just make a uh, couple circles and go from there. So if you want, you can do one like that and it'll be kind of a skinnier. Okay, so I had to refresh my memory. Uh, this round part on like P's and R's and Q's and stuff is called a bowl. So you can do it like this and have a skinnier bowl or you can drag it out a little bit and have a wider bowl. I'm gonna drag mine out until it lines up with this. And um, yeah, so now you have to put something right here. Well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't have to, but I think I will. So I'm just going to make another rectangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to shorten it. I'm going to turn it, and then I'm going to use this for my guide on where to put the other circle, like the middle circle. Okay, so there's that. And now the middle circle needs to fit within this one circle, like that, and then just shrink it down like this right here like that <clears throat> and then now I just need to make sure that it lines up with this stuff like that okay so now this should work it might look a little bit weird because it's all geometrical but it ultimately it should work and it should get the job done okay make all this the same width and so now you're going to select everything again. You're going to go to Object, and then you're going to go to Live Paint, then Make, and then um, you'll deselect and get your Live Paint bucket. And I'll just switch this over to black, and then I'll fill in all the parts that I want to use or that I want to be black. So I'll do this one, this one, um, those, all of these. And so now I can have an R that kind of looks like that, which is kind of weird, so I'll fill in this part. And um, yeah, that's not that bad. And I'll do that right there. So yeah, this kind of looks weird. It's kind of weird in retro. You know, usually if you have the, the R, um, you would want the back of the counter to be straight to match this. So that's why it looks weird. But you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so that is the, the live paint tool. And that's just how you can use it to make simple geometric shapes like letters or other like combined shapes. Like maybe you want to use some triangles to make some mountains or, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I, I will definitely see you guys next week with a brand new episode.